Hi, welcome to Ready Retina Racing. It's uh, race preview time, and uh, we're going to start having a look at um, a race for tomorrow, which is Tuesday, the 25th of July. Um, we're going to Chelmsford tomorrow, um, so really competitive handicap that I want to have a look at. To be honest, I'm a bit of a late convert to all weather racing. Um, I've only really been looking at it closely for probably around about five years now. Um, I'll tell you before that I was a bit of an all-weather uh, all racing snob and um, I don't mind admitting it and it wasn't something that really um, kind of interested me or, or appeared on my radar too much. Um, what got me started looking into all-weather racing a bit closer was pretty much as a result of what we've seen the last two weekends really. Um, British summertime is rather unpredictable. Um, and you can work a lot of things out based on certain grounds and then you, you, know, you get all day rain or, or thunderstorms and it completely changes that so um, and that tends to have a, a massive impact on, on what you've kind of worked out in terms of uh, turf races but on the all weather it doesn't have so much of an impact um, we get a consistent surface 95 plus percent of the time you can have occasions it's a bit runs a bit rides a bit fast or a bit slow but you know, vast majority of the time you get a consistent surface, and um, you know when when you're a punter and you're you're staking decent stakes money, you you, you want to know that you you kind of you know the race is going to be run to similar kind of um, conditions that you've worked it out to be. So. Onto the race itself. Um, so yeah, we're looking at the the 750 at Chelmsford. Now, um, anyone who's kind of um, paid any attention or followed any of my previews so far may have noticed one thing: is that a lot of the things I'm kind of previewing and tipping are very competitive handicaps, and this is very much a competitive handicap. Um, I, I try to look for value in the market, so I do my own book, uh, and I find that handicaps tend to offer you that value as opposed to say a maiden or, an, or a group race or a novice stake. So. You know, you, it maybe affects your, your win ratio, it maybe affects your ROI slightly, well maybe not your ROI, but certainly your win ratio, um, but because you are focusing on much more competitive races, but you know, if you can identify the, the value, as I say, then um, you can still make some nice profit from these. Um, so on to the race itself. Um, now I think here, I'm just looking at my other laptop, um, to refresh my memory. So. I think it's safe to say the three-year-olds are going to be popular here. Um, I think Totnes and Yeoman are going to head up the market. Um, however, I think this is quite a deep race, and I'd pay a bit of attention to this race and, and kind of follow the form a little bit, possibly, because it's got scope to have a bit of bad luck in running. You know, fourteen horses around Chelmsford. Um, so there is scope for a bit of bad luck in running here, and you know, as I say, it is quite a quite a tight little race, really, in that respect. Um, of those two three rods, I prefer Yeoman. Um, I think that's going to you know, really appreciate the step up to ten furlongs here. Um, I'm not as I mean, from its breeding, it definitely. Will. I'm not as convinced on the ten furlongs for Totnes. Um, I think it gets ten furlongs, but I'm not sure it prefers ten furlongs to a mile from what I've seen so far. Um, however, Totnes has definitely come out better on the draw front, you know, drawn in three, um, whereas Yeoman 14, is it uh, 14 or 15? It's maybe not ideal. Um, he's going to be out wide. He's probably going to have to tuck in and, um, and you know, come down the outside and hope for a little bit of luck in running, really, down the, down the middle to outside. So um, I think these two are going to be shorter than they should be, in my opinion. Um, and as it, it's mainly the draw with Yeoman rather than anything else. Uh, you know, I, I've got Yeoman in here at five to one favourite, and Totnes is six to one. Now, in terms of the book on this, I always try and work to a hundred percent book where possible. Um, I don't mind if I'm a percent or two over, but I tend to really work to to try and work to a hundred percent book. Um, I found this really difficult to get this any tighter than a hundred and ten percent. Um, and that's because there's a lot, just a lot of depth in the race, and there is an on-runner in there now, so you know that might tighten it up a little bit more than what I had. But it, and as I say, that 110% is based on Yeoman as a five-to-one favourite here. I think these two probably will be shorter. I think they're both going to be around about the 72 4 to one mark. So you know they're, they're going to be taking up the best part of 50% of the book here. Um, and I, I don't think their chances are as strong as that personally. Um, so the one that interests me is, we're going for the Alan King trained Mayfair Gold. And I think the real angle here is the first time Hood. Now, if you look at her form um, kind of last year, well, back end of last year on the all weather, she was very progressive. You know, she was running well, um, progressing with every run, and probably topped that off with a course and distance win here in May, beating uh, beating Boasty and Marion's Boy. 
I, I like that run and why I like that run was they crawled that day and they crawled all the way up to probably about three furlongs from home and then they started sprinting um, she's made up about two lengths on those two out in front so they've definitely had the run of the race ahead of her she's made up two lengths off them and won quite comfortably won the bit in hand over this course in distance she's only a pound higher now for this race tomorrow now since then you could say the last two runs have been a little bit disappointing um, I'm prepared to put a line through both of them though. I think the first one was first time on turf at Newmarket and it's probably looking like she maybe isn't a turf horse. She didn't run terribly, but it wasn't a great run either. Um, they brought her back to the all weather last time at Kempton and that was just a bit of a bizarre race. Um, she was keen, you know, I mean, she has been keen and that's why the first time hood is a key angle here. You know, we need that hood to kind of um, switch her off a bit more and settle her in a, in a run a bit more. Um, I thought last time, you know, she was ridden by Holly Doyle over a mile. Um, Holly took a pull early on, probably because it has raced a little bit keen. And then she found herself, she was still keen, and she found herself quite a long way behind and then didn't really show a great deal. So again, I think you've got to pull a line through that and just say that wasn't a true run. Um, and this is the thing, sometimes when you make excuses like these for horses, if you can find something enough there to make an excuse on, um, whilst it's not ideal because you want horses to be in good form, but it, it's giving you a better price as well. So, you know, that's that's the trade-off here. Um, but as I say, you go back to that run in May, and I think that was a really good run over course and distance. Um, if they can switch her off with this hood, you've got Russell Ryan on board tomorrow. I mean, he's quite a proactive jockey, I always think, Russell Ryan. So she's drawn stall six. So if he can kind of pop her out and the hood works and he can set her in, tracking the pace in about fourth or fifth, I think that would be ideal here. And I think she'll come home quite strongly. Um, and I think she's, um, I think she represents quite a good each way bet tomorrow. I say each way, I mean, in my book, I've got her in at eight to one, third in the betting beyond the two three-year-olds. Um, I suspect we'll get bigger than that though, um, because of those last two runs. I think I think the market might slightly overreact to her. Um, so I would say, I mean, I, I'm not opposed to taking extra places and shaving the point of or, or or something like that off the each way price. Now I know not everyone can get on with extra places, and I know not all bookmakers offer it. But I think if you, if you can get first four, and you're getting about eight or nine to one first four. Um, I would take that um, and you know I would be looking to back it each way if you can't get on for that I, I do think we'll probably get about the the tens of twelves mark as I say because I think the the last two runs might over overlook them in the market so I think if you get in if you're happy to take three places or if that's all you can take and she's around the the ten twelve to one mark um, then I, I again I would certainly play her each way tomorrow I think she's got I think she's got quite an interesting chance um, of the others, I mentioned that there's a, there's a few horses a bit keen in there. I mean, ours is one. <laughs> I hate backing keen horses. It's, it's one of my pet hates in racing. So, and I know I'm doing it here, but as I say, I am hoping that the hood really, the hood and the the, the likely stronger pace from the bigger field can kind of settle her down. Um, you've got Miss Bluebell, who can also be a bit keen. She's at installed 12, but she, she's got a likable profile on the all weather. I just think tomorrow's probably not the right race or day for her from that draw. Uh, she's by Ortard. I like Ortards on the all weather. I think it's an interesting angle. Um, you got the Godolphin one in here for Said Bin Sura, Wild Hurricane. Um, watch this horse back last time. It looks a really big, gross horse. This um, stall thirteen. She still it still looks a little bit green as well. First time cheap pieces. Um, I'm not sure how well that's going to take to you know running from from wide here at Chelmsford, but it, it's it's a progressive horse. It's got a chance. Don't get me wrong, but again, I'm not sure tomorrow's the right race. You got Tarbard at the top and the top mark on. You got to respect because it's got form around Chelmsford, but um, he's not badly handicapped. But I don't think this is a bad race for a class four, to be honest. Um, so ten stone one would probably be against. Uh, um, him, sorry. Um, one for the frog, Sean Woods again. That's another one that's likely to be keen. The way that's been racing recently. Then you've got some Chelmsford experts like Semsir, Jensen, Benson. Um, yeah, they, they've got bits and pieces of chances, but um, yeah, I think there's others with stronger profiles. There's probably not a huge amount of pace in this. Um, I think the pace is most likely going to come from Boasty and maybe the Bay Warrior. I think they'll probably take it along, but I'll be disappointed if horses can't pick either of those two up. Uh, that looks better handicapped and better quality horses in this race. So, yeah, I think, um, as I say, I think Yeoman would probably be my favourite and you know, Yeoman could be very progressive here. 
and uh, could be difficult to beat but stall 14 would put me off um, so the the tip I'm putting up and the recommendation is Mayfair Gold in the first time hood each way um, minimum price probably 8 or 9 to 1 if you're getting 4 places um, and maybe 10 12 to 1 if you are uh, more looking at the 3 places I think it will run a really good race and uh, yeah hopefully she'll, um, she'll give us a great run for our money tomorrow um, any comments, questions like that, you know, by all means, put it in the comments box. Happy to respond. Um, and yeah, please subscribe. You know, we've had a few subscribers over the last couple of days, which is really good. Um, a lot of people who have watched the video, though, doesn't, don't appear to have subscribed. So it'd be good if we could change it and get more subscribers. But um, so, yeah, hopefully we can have a, a good day tomorrow. And uh, I'm sure we'll be back later this week with further previews on, on some of the other races. OK, thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.